What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Boss Life with Bonds. I am your host, Miss, I'm a Miss today, Siobhan Bonnie. And today we are talking about why you need to play, why it's so important to make time for play, um, what it looks like when we don't make time to play, and just some other things that you may not have considered while you've been out steady trying to deprive yourself. But before I jump in, guys, I am broadcasting live on YouTube, sometimes TikTok, today and Instagram today. If you could help me out, if you get value from any of my content, the lives, the courses, the programs, whether you're a current client or a former client, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel, like and share any videos. And the same thing that we're doing with the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, if you could just swing over to YouTube and do that same thing, that would help me out tremendously. Also, this Friday, is it Friday? This Thursday, uh, we're diving back into the self-healing series. I'm going to put in, put out another piece of content, another email, another training video, possibly a workbook to go with it, dealing about rejection, um, the rejection wound. This is so important for my entrepreneurs, for my coaches, for anybody whose livelihood depends on whether someone takes you up on your offer. Because if you have not healed that rejection wound, you are going to be struggling every time someone says no to your offer. Offer if you are unable to differentiate between your offer and you. And that is something that that I was total blind spot to me. Couldn't figure out um, why there were so many conflicting just behaviors with myself and how I showed up in my business. And it had a lot to do with the rejection wound. So whether you're an entrepreneur or not, you're going to get an insane amount of value from that. And I really hope that you are able to dig in. Uh, these series are made for women, but fellas, you are more than welcome to subscribe to this email um, why can't I talk to subscribe to this email series? The link will be in my show notes and it should also be in my bio on any social media platform. So with that said, oh, and last but not least, we still have, I want to say three spots available for the Awaken the Goddess Within, our first ever retreat. It's going to be a nice finish line to those of you that have been doing this self-healing summer series, or to those of you that are part of the mind and body fitness community, and you haven't had a lot of motivation towards your fitness goals. Because let's be honest, we all get stagnant every now and then. This is going to be the perfect boost for you uh, and give you something to look forward to. So let's go ahead and dive in today to why you need to play more. I know that if you guys have been listening to me uh, for any amount of time, you know that I use this phrase a lot. Your psychology and your physiology are linked. I saw that bad boy from Tony Robbins. And it's so true. And I got to see it up close and personal right in my face this past well, I, I'd say past few months, but um, I wrote a post last week about my manic depression and bipolar disorder, which I completely forgot was a real thing. If you didn't see that post, slide over and check that out. I'll probably put that note in the note to self, <laughs> put the uh, 12-year-old suicide post in an email so people know to go look at it. So anywho, I attempted suicide at 12 years old. I attempted to overdose on a bunch of my mom's pills. Luckily for me, this is so embarrassing. A lot of them were, you know, supplements. They weren't like pill, like pills that could kill me. Um, A few of them were, but either way, they had to get all that junk out of me. They didn't have to pump my stomach. I got there in time to drink some charcoal. They put me in a adolescent behavioral unit at the, I want to say psych ward, but at the hospital where crazy people are. And, um, and they say crazy people, but like where people who need help are. And they were like, yeah, sweetheart, you have manic depression, bipolar disorder. Here is some Prozac. And I remember taking the Prozac and feeling better, maybe the placebo effect, because I was very depressed at that time. But after I took the Prozac, after one prescription, I was like, I didn't like the way that it unnaturally made me feel better. I want to be able to manage my emotions without the reliance on pills. So at 12 years old, when I got diagnosed with bipolar disorder, I was like, no, thanks. I'm out. I'll figure this shit out on my own. And that's kind of been a theme with my life. I'll figure this shit out on your own. So how did I even get to bipolar disorder and this? Okay, we're going to ADHD too. Let's bring it back. So the reason why that was so important is because I totally forgot that I, because I'm manic depressive, I will fall into deep spells of depression and not realize I'm depressed. And here's why. This is very important for my coaches, my healers, my practitioners that work with women of color, right? Black women don't experience depression the same way other people do. 
Okay. I was explaining this to one of my team members because she needs a break. And I was like, take your break. And she's like, well, I don't want to feel weak. And I was like, you're not weak. You are working alongside someone whose ancestors were slaves. You are working along someone who doesn't know when to hit the pause button because that wasn't a luxury that my ancestors were afforded. And if you want to use that, well, slavery was 400 years ago. Cool. My grandmother still works like a fucking slave because that is ingrained in her because her mother, like it doesn't just die out just because your social economic status changes or because there's more technology in the world. These are the same generational curses, if we want to call them that, but also unconscious trauma that we pass down to our children. So when I say I'm depressed, it doesn't mean I'm sitting around not eating, not showering, not taking care of myself, not doing, not going to work. Like, yes, that's cute. That's fun. I love that. But when I say that I'm depressed and I've read this in an article, when black women are depressed, it doesn't look the same. When we're depressed, it feels like we are failing. We feel like we have failed miserably at something. We um, And we just keep trying to try harder, right? I want you to really put your mind into like the slave's mindset right now and think of how it felt to not get enough crops for the day and you get a bunch of lashes on your back. And the only thing that you know to do to not get hit again, right? Or get sold off from your family is to work harder. So when I'm depressed, I work harder. So when you guys see me pumping out content, it could be that I'm in a very creative flow and I don't want to hold back, but it could also be that I'm very depressed and I'm getting this emotion out of me. So at least I like to thank my subconscious. I like to thank my defense mechanism system for being smart enough to know that all of this pent up energy has to come out somewhere. So yay, love this for me. But what it also looks like is that I do the bare minimum to survive. I go into survival mode. So I work out, I'm a fitness coach, my business, right? My business is a health and wellness brand for women that does a lot of personal development and other things, but at its core, mind and body is a health and wellness brand for women. So I do work out. Um, I, it, sometimes it's only two to three times a week, but when I come home, I will sit on my couch and work from my phone or work from my computer and not move. So here's point number one is that the more that you play, um, you, or the more that you move, right? Your psychology and your physiology are linked together. When we are not moving, it's it's kind of like a catch-22. If I don't move, my brain does what? It thinks, oh, well, there's nothing to be excited about. There's nothing to get anxious about. There's nothing. There's no demand and there's no necessity for me to make progress or take action on anything. On the other hand, the catch-22 is that your brain is telling your body there's nothing to be excited about. There's nothing to make progress on. So your body just stays still and it stays stagnant. Now, your emotions, again, another Tony Robbins quote, quote, your emotions are simply energy in motion. And so if you find yourself not moving that much, I want you to check in with your emotions and see how you're feeling. If you are feeling blah, right? You don't have to necessarily be feeling down in the dumps. You don't have to be feeling depressed. But if you are feeling blah, uh, that is a good uh, red flag, right, to yourself indicator. Hey, I need to go out and get some sun or maybe I need to take a walk or I need to stretch or something I forgot about for like a good month or two, dance. Put some music on that feels good and dance, especially if you're a woman, especially if you're a woman who's been in church and the only dancing you can do is jumping up and down, holy rolling. I want you to put on some music that makes you want to move your hips and I want you to feel comfortable and free and safe to dance and move your hips. Your hips are your source of power, your powerhouse. It's where your womb is. That's where your sexual seductive powers are. It's not to be ashamed. But again, this is a form of play that so many, many of us women have had to suppress. And so because we can't play in the way that our bodies were naturally created to be because we have shame about being overweight. We have shame about being a Jezebel. We have shame about, oh, I'm a mom. I can't move or dance like that. Like all this shame. And just, I want you to put that into the context of everything that I just said about psychology and physiology. And if you feel that you can't move in the very fluid way that your body was meant to, what does that tell your bot? What does that tell? What, what message are you sending to your brain? I'm not safe. I'm not allowed. I shouldn't be allowed to move. And there's so many benefits of movement and play. Let me give you a few. Cognitive improvement. Your brain function improves when you play. Creativity. When I'm lifting weights or when I'm moving or doing something playful, I get so many good ideas and so many downloads, it's hard to keep up with. My notes app is filled with notes. My Google Docs app filled with content ideas, voice memos filled with like years and years of content because I spent a lot of time in nature, walking, playing, moving, okay? Another thing that play helps you do is it relieves stress, right? 
it helps you staying young and helps you feeling um, energized. The amount of people that tell me they feel out of shape or they're unhappy or they're depressed or they just don't really enjoy life, they're usually people, for lack of a better term, that don't do a lot. They sit on their asses all day with all due respect. They work and they move from one chair to the ne next chair. They move from their desk chair to their car chair to their couch, from their desk to their car to their bed. And you wonder why nothing's really exciting for you. It's like, there's no there's no reason to be excited. There's no joy in your day. It's just, well, I'm gonna sit here for eight hours. I'm gonna go sit here for eight hours. And you trick yourself into thinking that you're having fun and that you're experiencing life because you are, what are you doing? You're watching funny stuff. So you're laughing. Ha ha ha. I'm having fun. It's not the same thing as actual fun, right? It's not the same when your energy is in motion. You're watching TV on your iPad or on your phone or on your TV. That energy isn't in motion. It's still stuck. So your brain is like, yeah, okay, we're laughing. This is funny, but it's not really providing that full on experience of of, of that, that comes when you are moving and in play. So if you want to feel younger even and more energized, play a little bit more, go out and do these things. Your body doesn't just naturally, oh, I'm 30, oh, I'm 40, oh, I'm 50, oh, I'm 60. I'm gonna stop being able to do things. No, we stop progressing, right? Our metabolism slows down, our emotional state slows down because we slow down. If you keep active, right? If you keep active physically, if you keep active mentally, the more that you play on these things, the younger and more energized you're going to feel. So not only does it relieve stress, but it's going to help you feel more younger and or, uh, energized. Another thing that is beneficial for playing and movement is increased relationships, better quality of late relationships. When you're having fun, when you're moving, um, you're 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 having joy and when you're having joy with other people that that increases like the the bond that you two have in a relationship it improves your social skills and there's just so many benefits to being playful and to making time for play it's not even funny so point number one um this play is so imperative for transforming your life the psycho psychological and the physiological connection play well together so if you notice that you haven't been feeling very joyful often how many steps are you getting in a day Okay. I added, and in my client community, we do this thing where we, uh, well, I learned it from my business coach and I teach it to my clients, where you take a screenshot of something that makes you happy or something that makes you smile, right? Because your brain, right? Your subconscious loves pictures. So if I see this picture of myself looking so fly, and then I put the three areas of human life that we all want, uh, that most people hire coaches for, or that we're seeking improvement on, health, wealth, and relationships. People hire coaches so that they can, um, you, maybe they're an athlete, right? Or maybe it's going to help them in business, professional coach or physical coach. So that's health and wealth. And then relationships, you have dating coaches, you have life coaches like myself that help you become a better person so that you can have better dating lives, right? Or become the best version of yourself. So I got this pretty picture on my phone of myself or whatever. It could be a sunset, anything. So my brain's already happy. Like, ooh, I like that picture. And then I put the three areas in my life that are most important, health, wealth, and relationships. And then I put my goals underneath them for the week so that I'm constantly seeing it every time I pick up my phone, even if I don't want to read it, even if I just want to breeze over it. Subconscious brain is still looking at that thing, right? So I haven't put basic stuff on there that a fitness coach or anyone who's been active consistently does because it's kind of who I am now. But I realized um, not having those goals, right, gave me something like that means I wasn't actively working towards something. And when you are actively working towards something, you're a little bit more what? Motivated. And I see it often where people who, oh, I can't say motivated. I can't say motivated. Well, what's your goal? To lose weight. And I'm like, well, what's exciting about losing weight to you? And then they don't want to elaborate on it. They don't want to go deep into it. And I'm like, the reason why coaches harp in on your why is because your why is your motivation. Your why is what you're going to turn to when it's no longer fun. Or your why is what you're going to turn to to keep it still fun. And so when I look at my steps on my screen or when I look at goals, because our, our clients, they have a dashboard and they log into the app and it's got their daily to do's. And it may be something like drink water, bitch, depending on like if I'm <laughs> if, if I'm like if they're a one on one client, I'm gonna give them very specific things so that they know like I'm watching you. Um, but everybody gets like water goals, step goals and have a morning routine goal. And after a while, those things can get redundant and they're not as exciting. And so I take them off for a while. And clients will usually ask for them back after they realize, hey, I don't have anything I'm working towards anymore. It's kind of gamified, like, oh, I get to check them off. 
So not only does it give them that hit of like dopamine, like, yay, I did something good. I accomplished something, but it also is like a game, right? And so when I stopped gamifying or paying attention to, am I hitting my daily steps? And am I hitting my daily water? Because I'm a healthy person. Of course, I know to walk around. I'm a healthy person. And of course, I know to drink my water. Well, when I start slowly sliding into depression, I don't notice that I'm not walking as much anymore. I don't notice that I'm not drinking as much water anymore. And so by me not getting up and taking my morning walk where I listen to a podcast and have one of my coaches yell in my ear and get me hyped for the day, by taking that morning hype and walk out of my day slowly but surely, it had an, a, a crazy effect on my mental health. And as a result, I slowly slipped back into Potato Bonnie, who isn't as active and doesn't care at the end of the day if she has five or 10,000 steps or not. I'm just going to sit here and watch this show until I fall asleep and live vicariously through these people, right? And then, so this is this is how I experience oppression. So me not having those 5,000 steps a day is like, it's gotten real monotonous. Like people don't wanna hear the things that fitness coaches have been screaming from the top of their lungs since 2020, cause it got kind of played out. But what I wanna do is kind of breathe the life into some of those bare minimums and those basics and those ground rules that we set for you because this framework, especially you ladies, this framework is actually what's going to help support your overall health. If you know that you're walking at least 5,000 steps a day, not just to lose weight, because let's be real, that's not an exciting goal. The weight loss isn't what's exciting, right? What's exciting is being able to get into the dress. What's exciting is being able to walk around the park all day with your kids at Disney and not want to die. What's exciting is, oh my gosh, I'm 50 years old and I just rock climbed. That's what's exciting. And so when you're able to connect the, the exciting outcome to the monotonous work that you're doing today... Not only is it, you know, making you more motivated, but it's also like, this is for my mental health, because if I don't keep it moving, then I sit on my ass and I forget everything that's important to me. So really wanted to harp in on that point for you. And I'm going to take a sip of water. And if you're watching with me live, I would love to hear if this is good or not. I mean, I know it's good. I want to know if it's resonating with you. Okay. Diving back in. Another reason why you need to play more. Vacations. When I was selling at Hilton Grand Vacations, I didn't really, it was hard for me to sell them, not because I wasn't good at sales, but one, I was depressed. And also two, I didn't really think you, Chris, couldn't really understand um, the point of a vacation. And because I'm a person of uh, just who I am, like I have to believe it. Like I can't fake it. My, my face, I'm really good at poker faces because I waited tables for so long. And if people could see what I was thinking on my face, I already knew I wasn't getting a tip. Somebody asked me something crazy and I'm busy and I'm stressed and I'm sad. Like it's going to show up like, what the fuck are you talking? Like I may say, yeah, I can do that for you. But my face is saying, what the fuck is wrong with you? So I had to learn how to fix my face. And when someone asks me something, just be like, yeah, I can take care of that for you. And I've heard from partners that I'm very hard to read now as a result. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I didn't believe in vacations like that because I had never experienced them. I didn't realize that, that we didn't take vacations as a family. That was not a fucking thing. And I think the one, like we maybe, we took road trips to Tennessee to visit my great grandmother those were not vacations. The car was breaking down. We did not stop for food, fast food. We did not stop at tourist fun places. We were in a station wagon. It smelled. It was hot. We ate PB&Js and everybody had their own little thermos of water. And that's how I knew to travel, right? I, at least we got that, right? But I didn't understand this whole concept of a vacation. So when they're like, you got to sell it to people, I was like, for what? It's just something to spend money on. I ain't got no damn money for no vacation. Must be nice, right? Like I was not coming from the right mindset. And funny enough, um, and I was miserable there and I wasn't making any sales because of it. I ended up transferring to the other department, which is the people that confirm the vacations. And it didn't go much better over there. I had a hard time talking people into keeping their packages because I really didn't understand the value of a vacation. But what's ironic is that I took a break from them. I took a week off and I told this story recently on my podcast, um, one of the mo more recent episodes. I took a break from my vacation, <laughs> took a break from the job. Did a little staycation at Universal because I was still working there part-time. Still had my park perks. I had my Hilton 50 and $75 hotel stays. I could stay at the Rich Carlton for $75, y'all. Maybe it was $100. There were like three tiers. It was like $50 and $75. $50 for all the basic hotels, $75 for like the nice Hiltons. 
And same thing with Universal, 50 for like Cabana Bay and like Sapphire Falls and 75 for Hard Rock and Portofino Bay. I was living life. So I was like, you know what? Let me let me book myself a little staycation, enjoy it. And it was staying there, having that time off that like showed me how blessed I was. And it got me motivated to go back to serving and to quit Hilton and to enjoy the freedom that I had as a server to be able to travel whenever I wanted to, right? If I want to hop on a cruise, a three-day cruise is what, $700? I was like, yeah, I'll book that. I'll make that in two or three days waiting tables. So one thing that I forgot in this last couple of years as an entrepreneur is just how important play is and having something to look forward to. This is so important. This is the main reason why I want to do this podcast. The more you set up things for yourself to look up to, the more motivated you will be, right? When people know they have a trip coming up, they want to get in shape, they want to save money, they're just so excited, they're counting down the days, they're sharing it on their social media feed, and it helps them like bear their hard days at work, right? It helps them bear the, oh, my spouse, or all oh, the kids, or, like the daily routines that just drown you or drain you, it's so much easier to look forward to the better things now that you know you have something to look forward to. And when I think of depression, I'm going to tie this into my manic depression. When I think of what it is to be depressed to me, it is the loss of hope that things will ever get better. It is the magnifying of your current situation and the inability to see the light at the end of the tunnel, the light if you look to the left, because the, there's light all around us. But when we choose to hyper focus on what's not going well, which is exactly what I do when I'm depressed, and maybe you do too, it's impossible to see all of the possibilities because you are hyper focused on this area of your life or this season of your life where you don't feel hopeful. And so what happens when we stay in this zone of there's no hope for too long, you start to feel full of despair. And despair is draining and it's a never ending cycle and it is very hard to break out of. So some of the things that helped me break out of my depressive cycle this past, um, this round was one, acknowledging that that's what's happened. I had to take a step back and look. I was like, all right, so I spend my nights, instead of doing my nightly self audits like an entrepreneur, instead of meditating and connecting with my highest self and having really fun spiritual woo-woo times and doing things that I enjoy doing, I'm watching Once Upon a Time. And yeah, God speaks to me through that show because I'm not spending time to receive any other way. So it's like, yo, whatever. <laughs> But things that just reminded me, I just, I had to think about the basics of who I am and that seasons exist. This was a big one for me. I had to remind myself that seasons exist. And even though God in the universe is always trying to teach me in those hard times, it's easy for me to fall into depression because when I'm teaching or when you're learning, it's rough, right? You're studying for the bar. You're studying for your, your, your GRE, your nursing exams, whatever it is, like you're building your business. Like in those beginning stages, you're learning a lot and it is tough and it is hard. Um, and it can start. And when, especially if you're like building a business or especially if you didn't pass that first test, that can be so depressing. Right. And, and, it, and it's hard to deal with, especially if other things in your life aren't all going well too. And it could just be too much. And you could just be like, there's no way out. There's no way out. If you're like me, I'm a projector, so I have to, and I'm a 1-3 profile, um, which means I have to experiment. I have to fail. That's part of my learning process, and I'm okay with it now. But what helped me wake up was remembering this is just a season. You know, Even if you don't want to talk about God and religion right now, because sometimes me, I, I get funny about that from you know church trauma, whatever. But um, even if you don't want to look at it from a, a, a God, there's a, a, a father in heaven, look at it from universal and spiritual laws, uh, uh, the law of polarity. If it can be this bad, then guess what? It can be this good. You know that seasons come and go. You know the law of reciprocity. If you like, you know what I'm saying? So like when I started to think about like what brought me out of my depression, was looking at things from an abstract view versus very uh, more objective view than subjective. Like this is life. This is the hard season that you're going through as an entrepreneur. This is the hard season that you're going through in your love life. This is the hard lesson that you have to learn and you won't be here forever. It's a season. It will come and go. It'll be over soon. Great. Okay. But on, and that was the more practical way of looking at things. But at the end of the day, on a more like getting back to this point about play and whatnot, I, I had to look and see, I wasn't moving as much. I wasn't excited to do the things I normally do. I have people inviting me to hang out with them all the time. And I can't like, I get, I get, my guard goes up like, ew, leave my house. What's wrong with you? 
ew, have you come into my sanctuary house? What's wrong with you? And I was like, who is this woman? I wanted this apartment. I wanted to live here for so long. I finally, in 2021, I moved here and I barely have friends over, guys. I barely leave my house and I tell myself it's because this lake view is so beautiful and I'm not going to lie. It is like, you see where I'm not looking at the camera. It's I'm staring at the freaking lake. It's just, it's just, it just makes my heart warm. But I realized that I was hiding behind, um, you know, this comfort, right? Comfort is such a beautiful thing, um, but we can get comfortable in our depression. Right. And that's exactly what I did. I got comfortable being in this house by myself, staring at this lake while not talking to friends, staring at this lake while putting the pause button on my inner work, the inner work that I did every day religiously to make sure that I was in alignment and got this apartment and moved up in my life. I stopped doing all of that. And to be transparent, it's because I went through a season of a lot of um, I'm not going to call them failures, lessons and a lot of no's, a lot of rejection. A lot of the things that I shot my shot out this last 20, uh, 12 months did not work out at all. Not at all how I thought it. But I just kept shooting my shot because that's entrepreneurship. And, and maybe some of you, you have been shooting your shot at life so much that you've fallen into a little depression too. And you think that you don't deserve to play or you think that you don't deserve. Um, this happens a lot with my male friends I see because um, grind, 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 right? You don't think that you get to deserve to play because you haven't won anything. You don't think that you deserve to play because you haven't accomplished anything. And it's like, when it comes to the game of success, it's not about winning everything that you shoot at. It's about going from failure to failure without losing your excitement. It's from going failure to failure without getting disappointed. That's what success is. And I think hearing that this weekend, I was like, dude, then I'm successful as fuck. So I'm still motherfucking standing. So you know what? I'm going to go play. Not because I'm, you know, crush this quarter in sales necessarily, or because, you know, all my clients are like winning, like for no particular reason other than, hey, I have gone from failure to failure without losing hope. That's what success is. So that really, that helped me. But where vacation and play comes into this is you got to give yourself something to fucking look forward to. Guys, I haven't had a real vacation since, um... Was it, was it, uh, come on now. I'm getting there. I'm getting so close. Since I went to Mexico at the end of 20, was it 2021? When did I go see Tony Robbins? Yes. It was the end of 2021. I went to, I went to go see Tony Robbins in West Palm and then drove down to Miami and hopped on a cruise ship with my homegirl. And we went to, um, we went to Mexico for the weekend. And then the very next year, I was very focused on building my courses and my programs. And I was so balls deep in building this like persona as this super successful mindset and life coach manifestation, all this shit that I wasn't like I, I wasn't taking time out for myself. One of the reasons why people were drawn to me before is because I was always having fun. I was always going out and trying craft beers, trying really cool foods, going to Universal, going to the beach, traveling and all these things. But I let someone get in my head and I've talked about this a lot. I let someone, a masculine, right? Because they don't operate the same way we do. And that's okay. But he's like, you travel a lot. You play a lot. You need to get more business focused. And the moment I did that, like I lost I feel like that glow that made people want to follow me and made people interested in what I was doing because the only thing I had to talk about now was only thing you guys saw was me recording podcasts and sitting at a at a at, at my kitchen table instead of like enjoying life. So giving yourself something to look forward to is going to be such a boost to so many areas of your life, right? And then the last point that I want to harp in on is how play can take you from survival to thriving. We know how this could have been three different podcast episodes. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, you know the phrase that says the the thinking like what got you here won't get you there. The old thinking won't produce new habits, and you can't create, you can't solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that created the problem. We all know this, right? Okay. Well, you can't get out of survival mode, you can't get into thriving mode when your thought processes are only survival. And I may turn this into its own episode because I the example that I have doesn't really have to do with play so much. But when you're in survival mode, and I feel like I just got out of that level like recently, like where I'm on edge every day, like, is this going to work out? Is this going to be okay? No, I don't want to plan anything. How's this going to work out? Ugh! Well, what that does to you is not planning for the future, right? 
Like I have people that want to talk like, you know, networking, community, this, this, and that. When I was in survival mode these past few months of my business, I was like, no, I don't want to meet up for coffee. No, I don't want to talk about shit. Why? Because in my head, I could not see, because in that depressed state, I could not see or imagine the next stage where I would be thriving again. I could not even fathom that things would get better. And so that kept me thinking in survival mode. Um, and, and when you, and I just explained how thriving and having fun and playing was such a facet of my brand and of my business. So it only makes sense that when I stopped playing as much, people stopped wanting to come play with me, right? I'm all serious, tough, and, and, and just, you know, whatever, like that energy that I exude is not the same as the girl that goes out and plays all the time. It's just not. Um, and so when I would make decisions for my business based off of me feeling scared to, to like, why would I play in coffee and convo with you? I don't even know if I'm going to be in business. Like I go, that's the man of depression. Like it's not, there's no in between with me. I'm either doing the very best that I can look at me or I'm like, everything's going to shit right now. And on the outside, it doesn't look that way. Cognitively, right? Consciously, I know all the words. I know all the personal development words. I know all the success motivation words. I know all the entrepreneur um, like phrases. I know it all. And for the most part, I live it all. But when I switch from, from regular Bonnie to depressed Bonnie, it just goes from like here to here to, well, maybe I should just quit. Well, maybe maybe this is it. Maybe this is the end. Maybe I was foolish. Maybe I was joking. Maybe, maybe I was wrong. I was dumb. Oh my God, I was so dumb. What was I thinking? And it can spiral down faster than, than fucking Chick-fil-A gets you through the damn drive through in and out. Like I was just spiral so quickly. And the spiraling comes when I don't have my mind focused on thriving. When my mind is not focused on, okay, what's next? Or what will we do when we get to that next level? When it's just focused on, I just got to get through this month or I just got to do this. My spirits are so low. And some of you go through this. Your spirits are so low because you are stuck in survival thinking. And if that's you, I know what it's like. I know that you're afraid to play because you're like, I don't have money to pay to play. Quick ways to, to play without breaking the bank. And, um, and then we're going to wrap up today's podcast. And I'm just going to pull these ones out of my ass. These are my notes. Number one, quick way to pay or play without paying. Go to nature. There's a reason why I spend so much time in nature. It's free 99. Okay. You can go sit by the water and be reminded of the abundance of life, just how big and expansive the lake is, how deep it is, how like if someone were to like, there's just ways to see abundance and expansion in your life by going to nature. Go to a lake, right? Go take a walk. Go take a walk and put your favorite songs on. Go take a walk and listen to a podcast that gets you hype. Okay, that's going to shift your mood. And it's not necessarily play, but it's better than just sitting on your arse. Okay? If you have kids, if you have friends or people, uh, go to a local park. Like, I know I'm trying to think of ways that won't bake, like break the bank uh, for playing, but because you don't always have to take a vacation. You take a staycation, right? Go... Uh, get a day pass at a hotel or something and go hang out in the spa and just treat yourself for a little bit. Some of you need to learn to play hooky for a day where you don't answer your calls. Like if you're someone that responds to every call, every text, every email, you get to have a day where you don't, right? That's free. Let your team know or let somebody know I'm taking a mental health day and go freaking go to the movie theaters, go buy your favorite food. Some of you are so stuck on your fitness journeys that you don't have any fun. Yesterday, I ate, like, we got Papa John's pizza and sodas, and I'm definitely paying for it today. My stomach is jacked up. Damn, man. But it felt really good to just sit there and scarf some pizzas down and drink some soda and not have to worry about being perfect. There's so many ways that you can play that don't have to look like you hopping on a, a trip or a flight. But if you can, and you have the means to, you just have a stick up your ass and you're wound up too tight, book a trip right now. Book a flight somewhere, right? Even if it's over the weekend, even if it's a short trip, I highly encourage you to get play back into your day because this is what the key is. Like the key to getting out of the stuckness, this key to getting out of your depression, the key to getting out of this season where it feels like stuff is not moving and grooving for you, go fucking play. And guys, that is an episode. That is that that's a podcast. I hope that you guys got some value from this. I hope that this touched someone's heart. And I hope that whoever needed to hear this got this message because yes, indeed, it was is for you. And if you did get value, screenshot this, post it to your stories and tag me at Siobhan Bonds on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, 
I'm going to have some show notes in the links for you. What did I say I was going to do? Oh, that 12 year old, the, the post about my bipolar disorder, just in case you missed that. And the self healing series to email series. Get signed up for that. All right, y'all. I will see you Wednesday. Love you to the moon and back. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time on The Boss Life with Bombs. Woohoo! Is our playground, Chris. Eep.